All right, so we're right here in our demo room, and I'm here with John Santos, longtime friend. Dude, super good to have you here. Man, thanks for inviting us over. This video, uh, I really want to talk like candidly about challenges, uh, good stuff about DTF. That's what we're talking about today. John just got this Omni DTF package. Let's go. <laughs> today was your guys' training. So first, how was it? First of all, I think I think one of the things about DTF that like we've been doing it for since January before that, and we were testing back last July and we played a lot, a lot with different equipment. I saw this one roll out around the holidays and I was like, okay, this is cool, but let's keep testing with this other one, wider format. When we came in for the training today, we learned a lot, man. <laughs> we learned a lot about how a lot of the other equipment is essentially like a lot of workarounds. You have to do certain Photoshop you have to still touch it with Photoshop even though the customer gave you art. You have to do a lot of little back-end things and adjustments where this machine just makes it easy, dude. Like you guys thought about the details and it's all about uploading and printing. Yep. And of course there's these little intricacies that are involved with every piece of equipment. So like the adjustment of the papers, the ink, the head strikes, things that you gotta be cautious about. And if you don't do it right, then obviously you might mess up a machine, but that's with any machine. So I think once you're doing this once you get into it and you test another machine you see what the night and day difference is man yeah. it's incredible yeah by far. i can I genuinely say that dude thank you that a lot of it uh, has to do with what kind of improvements you can make uh, and then also our team members that walk you through it and work with you through the process you know so that's that's super uh, important. awesome awesome support um you know mickey came in here and it was incredible at teaching us everything that we needed to know ask questions he knew everything about this thing <laughs> there wasn't a question that threw him off yep. mastered how this thing works for sure what kind of challenges were you having before so i would say the biggest challenge is some of the inconsistencies that you might get from print to print and what we're learning is that if you don't have the machine dialed in or if the machine isn't dialed in to like accommodate, you might have a shift in, in print. So your base layer and your top layer might, might be a little bit different. So instead of you trying to troubleshoot, is it the, is it the roller? Cause sometimes the rollers on the other machines don't work well out of the box. Like they're, they're just not good. They don't have the right sensors. It's not, it's hard to set up. Where this, it seems that you just literally plug and play. So challenges mainly are you know, the choke, sometimes the choke and the under layer of white is an issue with DTF. Sometimes the peel and, or even the, uh, like what I noticed about this paper is that this paper um, definitely allows you to do hot and cold, yep. which is really cool because we're gonna keep telling people to just peel cold, but <laughs> if they peel warm or whatever, they don't have to worry about it. And, yeah. I, and I peeled it hot and it worked too. Yeah, see, yeah. it does. But I don't want to confuse people, so we're going to keep it. Confused. Yeah, and that's the main thing. So if you're printing for others, if you're fulfilling, so you guys are fulfilling, we'll link your stuff down below um, for, for John at Street Crafter. Streetcrafter.com. There you go. And basically, uh, you're fulfilling for others. You want them to receive the product, and then you also want it to be like easy how you peel it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why we stuck a lot with telling people, hey, peel it cold. Um, and that's why the, the actual coatings on the rolls are very important uh, and, and all of that, because otherwise people receive it and now you have a support headache. Yes. Also another big issue is like, uh, if they don't, not, not everybody has the right press. So their temperatures might vary, their things might be a little off. So if we're telling them to peel cold, but the print wasn't right any, anyways, there's a lot of like issues that you're gonna have dealing with customers that are doing it themselves but by the paper being hot or cold, I know it's gonna cut down a lot of that question. Yeah, big time. How do you feel about uh, print quality? Were you having issues uh, with print quality or you guys had it dialed in? Uh, how do you compare the print quality from here? The print quality I would say was was pretty much on par. I'm a big fan of this paper. Yeah. So the you guys upgrading your supplies made a big, big difference. We've been working with suppliers for different coatings. Uh, because as we reformulate the inks and make them better, then you want to have the media, the, the the films and all that with enough coating to, to take it, you know? So that's that's a, a cool part. Another thing that I, that I want to point out is when you're working with software attached to equipment, sometimes I feel that people separate the two, but you guys have worked the equipment to work with this. You've yeah. worked your software to work with the equipment. Yep. And it's really easy to work versus other things where you have to like import from Photoshop, you gotta run a rip file and you're doing all these like extra <laughs> steps. 
to get your print ready file where this, you just bring it into the program. It's seamless, more seamless than anything else. Yeah, so we have engineers here to work with our firmware and our software. The idea is open it up and print it. Uh, you haven't even seen the automation game, but the, the other thing is being able to gang up your orders, scan a barcode, and the machine just goes with all of them, right? So the idea is uh, remove some of these steps. How is your, your other equipment as far as setting up a print and all that oh, man. <laughs> uh, versus this? It's night and day, like I said, this is gonna save us so much more time on the print setup because you have to individually open up the files that you wanna print out. So if somebody submits a gang sheet, then obviously they've submitted that gang sheet. We have to format it. We gotta do a, a spot color, and then we got to do a uh, choking through Photoshop and you got to convert it into TIFF and then it goes into the software for the rip and then the rip. So by the time you did all this, you literally just spent like, you have to have somebody on payroll just to do that. Yeah. For you to get print ready files where this, you literally just make sure it's a PNG, put it into there and it does everything. Yeah. And, and I that, didn't believe it at first. I was like, <laughs> how's that going to work? Is this really true? But it is, man. That shit was that's what's, cool. What's the hype? You know, there there is a lot of hype. Uh, there, this is This is new, right? new technology, everyone's learning, pretty much, even us, right? We're learning every day, we're doing new things every day. But the main constant part is uh, being able to do things that are simple and they're, they're fully integrated. So uh, guys, always figure out, uh, get in front of whatever you're buying, set up your file, print it, use it, you know, you'll, you'll see the difference right away. Most definitely. I would, I would encourage you to try out those other machines. And then when you try this one, you'll see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and you know, I was even talking earlier with somebody from my team. I was like, your, our job is to know uh, way more about what's out there so you can guide people as to, you know, where to go. Right. So definitely uh, see what's out there and test out the different things that are going to save you time because two minutes here, three minutes there, all of that, that's money that you're paying for payroll. Another big difference too is the way that this is formulated to just kind of keep the area clean where yeah. it doesn't feel like you got a DTF printer in the <laughs> office or at home if you're gonna have this from home. And that's another fact is that it plugs into that wall power yeah. so you don't have to have that three phase power that a lot of those other machines have. And unless you already have three phase installed into your house or office, you're gonna have to convert that too to run a regular DTF printer, but this one, plugs right into the wall, which is cool. Dude, that's a great point. So one of the reasons when we developed this, I wanted to be able to include the oven, include the machine and all that, and have it fit in the door. You could bring it in, you could plug it in, and you don't have to have, you know, $2,000 electrician yeah. deal on it. So this is the whole kit. It comes with everything, so you guys can use it and not have any special power and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Plug and play. It really is as close as you can get to plug and play. Taking the training here definitely helped because uh, we've done we've done printing with other equipment, so we kind of knew what we were getting into. But the little intricacies of how this machine works, it was something we could learn in a few hours, which was which was cool. Yeah. So training super important. We're we're including training with our products because it's a it's a big deal, right? But definitely uh, always on site. Uh, either we go or you got pay. Right, you gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for travel. That hotels are expensive, but, uh, but no, Ed, you 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 get the one-on-one -on -one here. Uh, we also have remote. Uh, that takes longer. It's it's also good. A lot of you know, I would say eighty percent of our customers do remote, but it's more of a learning. You gotta, you gotta show us more, and here's the webcam and all that. But definitely training is very important. And you guys had experience, yeah. you know, uh, as to like kind of what not to do and all that. No, it definitely helped just having the little details of like the tightening of certain things, like to what level should it be tightened. Little, little tiny details you overlook sometimes when you're using the new equipment, but these guys, Omniprint, knocked it out the park for sure. Man, that's awesome. Uh, any, any other like, what, what can somebody learn about? Are they, are they getting in the game and um, stuff that the vendors don't tell you, the sales reps don't tell you when they're importing stuff and then just selling it to you. So I would say the biggest thing is the quality and consistency. So like if you don't have the right quality papers or the, or the right quality inks, you are gonna get jams, you're gonna get misprints, you're gonna have to reship. Uh, that's something that we had to do sometimes when when the, when the paper wouldn't cure correctly because maybe the ink or the glue, was, the white underbase wasn't consistent. 
There's a lot of little differences that happen when you're printing in those large formats, where I think this here, you dial it in pretty easily. It's a, a lot more accessible than having this big equipment that's printing a piece of paper. And now you have to learn about all the, all the components because these guys here already, already kind of figured it out for you. So you can call and get those questions answered. Whereas if you go somewhere else, good luck trying to get any, any response from anybody. I mean, it's gonna be up to your own. So if you like to tinker and you like to like uh, really break stuff and fix it, or if it's broken, fix it yourself and knock yourself out with a, one of those other competitor printers. But this one here, seems that uh, you can email, give them a call. They'll, it's, it's pretty straightforward. It's, I think it's a lot simpler than a DTG machine is, yeah. right? So it's not so complicated to like fix yourself and it doesn't have as many components from what I was looking at. So it's pretty straightforward, um, something that's gonna be reliable for you. I, I love that because one, one thing guys is that you're always gonna get, hey, this is, this is uh, the, the best thing since sliced bread. I don't care what comes out, mm -hmm. the reality is uh, you wanna uh, be able to get that backup, get the support and have people that have done the things uh, that you wanna do to, to get help, right? Uh, and to grow. One thing I would say, definitely think about, uh, I'd rather have you have some orders under your belt, right? Some, some stuff that you're doing with John or with somebody else before you get your equipment, right? And I know it sounds counterintuitive, like, hey, what's this guy telling me uh, I shouldn't buy stuff uh, right away? The reality is, if you haven't sold anything, uh, dude, I don't want you buying equipment yet. Yeah, yeah, you shouldn't. You shouldn't buy anything until you start making money with whatever it is that you're selling. So that's that's the reason why we dropped the streetcrafter.com site. We wanted people, we wanted to make it accessible to anybody. So if you guys go on our website and you look at press art, we're using we're using DTF printers, and we're essentially printing in the same format. We're actually gonna uh, we're gonna upload new product sizes and dimensions, which is gonna match the the OmniPrint DTF directly. So when you guys order that, you can literally get a feel for yourself on what you're getting. Once you start building up that demand and that hype, then you can consider buying a piece of equipment. But at the end of the day, guys, this costs money. This isn't free. You got to pay the bill on it or the, you know, or the, or the creditors will start knocking on your door to collect. Right. Yep. So you don't want to get into debt before you start making money. So make sure to use, you know, be, become knowledgeable, start using these, uh, the, these print methods to start selling your brand or even offering it as a print service in your area. You know, the whole model that we have with Street Crafters is that we help you make more than money. And part of that means we're gonna help you make money, but then we're also gonna help you make a lot more experiences and enjoyment in your own life. So don't have a high overhead when you get started. Order through a supplier, start building up your business and contacts. And once you start getting that, that, that recurring business and those sales, then you can consider on like, hey, how can I cut and keep some of that profit to myself, realizing that it's work to maintain, but if you can get that margin and you already got that client base, you're gonna make a lot more money. 100%, and John's did this himself, you know? So he went from not being uh, the guy doing the production to now having orders to do, experience, uh, sales under your belt and all that. And that, honestly, that's the best way. That's the best way to success. Because if you don't get those reps in of taking care of customers, making some money first and all that, then you know you're gonna you're gonna think that the machine does that for you. Uh, yeah, it and, doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it does not. It, it uh, produces. Since I think this month we reached almost our thousandth customer, which was nice. pretty cool, man. See, I was go. like, there yeah, a thousand customers, a thousand customer service questions. <laughs> <laughs> you can expect anywhere between ten percent of questions. That's a hundred people you got to deal with, you know. So big time. You got to be ready for that. You got to be. You got to put the reps in up front in order for for this stuff to make sense. Because if you jump with everything, you jump all in with everything, then you're gonna be wondering, where do I get my next sale? I can't pay the bill. This thing don't work. Yeah. You're gonna start looking at all the negatives because you got so much things piled up versus if you're in a better position, you only look at things in a positive way because now you can say, hey, this is actually get, allowing me to get 5X my profit than I would have if I outsourced it. So keep these things in mind. Get nice business before you invest. Yeah, 100%. You know, there, there's a few details that are super important. We said, hey, we're gonna do something Q&A, we're gonna do stuff that, you know, what they don't tell you, right? So there's a lot of hype about printing bigger and printing wider, right? When I developed this format, it was more for what can we get done that is a production quality size that can keep you printing properly. Now that you've tried both, um, 
What can you tell people out there about that? I would say, you know, because when you think about the 14 inch versus like other, other printers might be at 24 inch. Um, at first I was like, yo, that's, that's not really gonna work for what we're doing. But as we started doing more business, we realized a lot of the prints don't go beyond maybe 11 or 12. You might get some 13s in there. But for the most part, people are constrained to that 13. Design-wise, they're kind of thinking about it in the 13 by whatever, 18 sometimes, 19, that comes constrained. So in terms of the print size, you're gonna be able to hit 95% of, maybe 97% of your orders with this printer. I mean, there's gonna be those customers that are like, hey, I want a 24 inch by a 24 inch print because I want to do an all over graphic. Yeah. And, you know, and those ones, they got to know what they're doing, but that's like maybe your 1% of customers that are going to request that. Everybody else is going to be printing within what they know, which is a graphic tee, little logos, uh, sleeve prints, neck prints. Um, so a lot of your common sizes and ordering is going to be this. And, um, and that's why when we reached out to you, I was like, yo, it just makes sense for us to move to this. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, uh, what, what it is, is think about it like this. Not only do you have the right footprint of machine to go in your shop, that safe space, but if you think about the labor you save at the end of it, when you have to cut it, and then you have all this wasted film and all that stuff, it's not worth it. So it's one of the reasons why we decided to do a custom size like this. So this is, you know, our rolls are 14.5 inches wide, you know, print area, Max, you want to be around 14, so you can have some some space on the left and right to hold the film and all that, and that's gonna get you uh, most of the way there, right? So that's a that's a huge myth to get you to buy something huge. Any bigger, uh, yeah, yeah, doesn't make 100%. sense. 100%. I actually we, we just printed this, and I wanna I wanna cut this out so they can kind of see what we're talking about. So like, this looks nice. Yeah, that's probably like the biggest size customers are gonna request. Like this is a. 14, I think I did it like 13 by 19. Yep. But like, if you look at it, like let's see on the back of the shirt. I mean, that's a huge print guys. Like you don't need to go any bigger than that. And I, I kind of went really big. I thought I, I thought I probably needed to go smaller, but this is a good example of, of you printing something and thinking that maybe you do need a 23 inch where this is a pretty big print when it comes to t-shirt printing. And of course, the better art that the customer gives you, the, the nicer the design becomes, right? So this is a mentalities collaboration we're doing with them. And they're gonna be gifting this to a bunch of students. But I mean, this is the kind of detail you can get with these machines. Yeah, yeah I love it. And in that terms of great. like little details, like line work, we tested points. We were really throwing <laughs> all kinds of things yes. to you guys today. We were like, you know what? This is some of the issues that we've encountered. You pass with flying colors. Yeah, and the <laughs> idea is, is to work through issues and to get, get to, like the real stuff, right? And that's why we wanted to do this video. It's about like, what are these, these little things? Because uh, it does make a difference. For example, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a big uh, proponent of controlling as many things as you can. That's why we, for example, we formulate and we manufacture all our inks here. Not only because I want them to be 100% safe. Uh, our inks is the only one with like, none of the nasty chemicals. Uh, you didn't see any fumes coming out or any of that stuff, right? It matters, right? It matters. But also, uh, let's talk about the feel a little bit. Um, what can you tell the audience about, you know, having the right feel on a transfer and, and what, how this stuff compares? To like DTG yeah. or anything yeah. else? DTF, DTG. Yeah. So I think like when, when you're looking at DTF and you're like considering, hey, what's the difference between the print methods? I wanna say, we were having a conversation about this earlier that DTF is like DTG and screen printer's bad little cousin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like he's reliable, you can count on him. He's gonna get the job done, but he's gonna get it done a little bit different. Yep. And I think that's important to note is that like DTG has a ink embedded into the, into the shirt. So it naturally feels less like a film on top where screen print feels like obviously ink on top of the shirt. This is kind of a blend of the two. So the biggest thing that we've seen, the art that comes out the most incredible, the things that are like, you know, this looks amazing, is when customers can format art. So if you're formatting or creating art for DTF, the biggest thing you need to consider is space, like negative space in your design to allow the shirt to really breathe through. Because if you just go with like a full image here, it's gonna feel like a full image. I mean, this is this is still a film, guys. Like this isn't, an, this film doesn't go away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't disappear with the heat. It just stays with the design, right? So 
the more the more vectorized based graphics you can get on your DTF, the better your overall product is gonna look. So the best art that we've encountered is when people do art like this. Like this right here is gonna look solid. Your customers won't even know the difference between this or a screen print. So it really is an incredible feel and overall great product. When you start going on like full images, it's gonna feel more, uh, what I liked about your guys' printer is that it does feel more silky. So yeah. like, even though it's a full image color and like, I'm talking full image, like a photograph. Yeah. So if somebody's pictures on the thing, like we just printed one over there, if it feels very like uh, silky. So it's still like a buttery feel. So it's gonna feel good. But again, it would have looked better on a DTG machine because that full image would have been embedded in the shirt. Um, but with DTF, you can still accomplish it. But again, it's like DTG screen printers, bad little cousin. He's gonna get the job done, but he's gonna do it differently. So if yeah. you help him, if you tell him, hey, little cuz, just print this out, exactly. he's gonna do a great job. If you tell him, hey, cuz, print out this full picture, probably not gonna, <laughs> not gonna knock it out the park like he would with this. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully the little cousin doesn't complain to your mom. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What, you know, one thing that's important that we do a little bit different is, you know, we're big about the ink savings and all that stuff. And we don't do like a huge block of white ink behind it. Yeah, I uh, saw that. I saw that. That yeah. was cool. Yeah. Like this right here, game changer. Bro. Yeah, because that, that gives you that better feel yep. and, it, and it saves money, right? So, of course, we have the other setting, but the reality is we're all about feel. That's all of our awards are about quality and all that. And definitely, it doesn't replace direct to garment or screen printing or just another tool in your toolbox. You know, there's a lot of hype around DTF. Oh, it's, it's the end all be all. It's just, it's just another tool. Another tool. And I think the coolest part about this is that you could really get creative and you'd have very lim little limitations on what you can print. So if you want to put it on your sleeve or if you want to throw it on the hood, if you want to yeah. put it on a shoe or sock, like you can accomplish this stuff with DTF where with screen printing or DTG, you had to like, get special platens or you still have to have like a decent you know print base for a heat for a heat press to make that happen but it's just more accessible for full customization on a garment versus the other methods at low minimums meaning like you can start with one you can print out one sheet have five six hits on your t-shirt and you literally look like you customize something like with screen printing if you do the art the right way Whereas if you wanted to do that with screen printing, you had to hit a minimum order quantities or are gonna hit you with color separation, sampling. You're 200 bucks in for your first design. <laughs> yep. Where this, you can literally go to streetcrafter.com, order it for 20 bucks and you got a full design. It's incredible. So you guys, this is changing the game. Yeah, yeah, d definitely. Uh, a, a couple things. Uh, what do you think about, uh, you know, somebody that's looking into vinyl versus DTF? Cause it, you know, it's on a film, they're both on the film. Uh, we get that question a lot. Um, you have experience with both. Uh, yeah. What can you tell the audience about that? You know, I would say vinyls are incredible for specialty applications. We're talking about like puff or, uh, or, or glow in the dark, or we're talking about like brick where you can make like labels and leather looking, uh, you know, end products. Um, you could really elevate your brand with vinyls. When it comes to using it for production though, this, if you're doing a full color, because a lot of times I think shops are using vinyls to do multiple colors, like maybe red, white, and blue on, on one garment, you can accomplish it with DTF. You just cut all of that weeding time, you cut all of that labor, you printed it on a thing in like seconds versus having to go and weed it out. So I think vinyls are great if you're gonna really elevate your brand or your service and provide something that a print shop would, would require minimum order quantities to do. Like we're talking about, if you're gonna go screen print puff, it's gonna be a higher order quantity. It might be 72 to 144, right? You're gonna be spending a good amount of money on that minimum order quantity because it's a specialty print. Um, so you gotta think about that. You're saving a lot more time. You're getting your product and sample out. You're selling it to your customer. Your customer's like, yo, I love this. So now you just proved out that concept and you could service that, that customer base as you start. But then once you start making money, you can move it to a print shop and kind of cut the cost of that. But DTF versus vinyl, I think DTF is really for anything full color graphics, vinyl, specialty print applications. Yeah, I love that. And there's a lot of cool stuff that you can do when you're doing uh, you know, a lot of hats, a lot of different things, uh, your tags, you know, maybe some special, uh, logo appliques that that are like they're only available and 
and the HTV, the vinyls and stuff, uh, which is super cool, yeah. you know? So everything has its place, right? So uh, whenever you hear like, hey, this is this will do everything, you know, you're, you're kind of getting the light yeah. too, right? So, yeah, definitely. I think until it starts doing puff and like glow in the dark, yeah, right. yep, it yep. still doesn't replace vinyl. And I think what's cool is you can combine vinyl with this. So like yeah. if you design your vinyl piece for the for the for the DTF, you can create that like illusion of multiple print types. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah there's there's a couple different specialty items that uh, we're releasing soon. For example, we have a glitter that we already fully tested, um, and that stuff will start coming out, right? Uh, think about it like this. Uh, you have a very small percentage of your customers that are going to request that stuff. So just keep that in mind when you're stocking the films and all that. Um, just have stuff to offer. It's just another thing uh, that you can offer people. Hey, you want glow in the dark? Here it is. You want glitter? Here it is. So this is the full package, guys. This is the actual machine, the oven, films, everything that comes with it, right? So how was it like loading inks and all that? Oh, um, simple, man. Yeah. You guys, like I said, you guys made it so easy. And I think it's not as intimidating as these bigger machines are. Like you look at some of these big machines, you're like, oh, what am I supposed to do here? And I got to find a space for it. I got to clear out the entire garage and include three-phase power. I got to have a dedicated spot in my warehouse to just run the operation and make sure I got some good ventilation up in that thing or else I'm going to choke myself out. Um, <laughs> where this is super like non-intimidating. You push some buttons. Once you get the setting and the trainings right, it's simple, man. You guys, you guys changed the, I can definitely say you guys are changing the game with this. Yeah, that's, that's the main mission. We want to empower people to grow and to win and all that, right? Because uh, that's how we win. Mm -hmm. And the tweaks that we can make uh, will help us you know, stand out, inks, the image quality, sizing, all these different things that a lot of the times I do it because of the value and our team's like, hey, we could, we don't have to do something that big. Or that complicated get, yeah, or yeah. that many options. Yeah. Just give them one option. Yep. You guys really do give multiple options yep. on stuff, which is cool because you can customize what you're working on. Yeah, definitely. The, the biggest thing we're going to be able to do with this is easily and quickly train people. Like uh, people will very easily be able to get behind this thing and start using it. Or the other one, you have to be a little bit of a mad scientist to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have multiple skill sets to make it work. You have to have an art team. You have to have somebody that could adjust settings and know when something breaks. A lot of times things are in Chinese. So you have to learn, <laughs> you have to learn some Mandarin. <laughs> okay, yeah, there you go. See? No, it's, it's but it's cheaper, reality. John. Yeah. Yeah, I got a great deal. Yeah. <laughs> so you're, not, you're probably not going to be able to train anybody up very easily where this, like you can yeah. install almost anybody pretty quickly. And like you have a checklist of stuff that has to get done in the beginning of shift, end of shift. Everything is figured out for you. Yeah. Another thing that people ask John is uh, like, how much does it cost to do a transfer like that? Um, and uh, like how fast that's does pretty it cool. That's, yeah. a, that's a good question. Cause I was actually asking for a lot of those details myself. So what I'm learning is that this, something like this, it actually tells you in the rip software yeah, too, does. which yep. is cool. Yeah. So it'll tell you, I didn't get to see this cost. But I think if I calculate it based on my uh, square inches divided by the calculus of pi, <laughs> we're probably sitting somewhere around. Uh... Dude, that that's how <laughs> others calculate the, the the cost of it. We're like, we got to build it in the rip. Yeah, it's yeah. actually in the rip, which yeah. is cool because it's a uh, it tells you the ink cost, and then there's a paper cost. The paper you're buying, you're you're buying by the roll. Yeah. So you take the cost of the material. Uh, plus the ink cost that it tells you and the, you're t it's telling you the exact amount. And also this is a roll fed, right? So people may, anybody that missed that, you load the roll in the back and you have pretty much like 325 feet, 100 yards. If you're not doing that many prints, you know, first off, think about maybe doing a machine that has sheets, right? But uh, with the roll, you got to feed it through, right? So you make sure you have enough for your day and, and all of that. Yeah. And there's some little tricks you can do that we were showing me tricks on like how to save paper and stuff, uh, yeah. depending on how you cut it. There's all these little things that you learn in the training, which is like, oh, that's smart. I wish I, I don't think we would have figured that out on our own. Like, oh, this is how you pay us less, John, and have less, less paper. Uh -huh. Yeah, I love that. Any any other top secret things that you've learned through this process? I want to say it's, it's not as intimidating as it's made out to be. And when you start using it, it your mind expands for possibility. So... Uh, right now when you're watching it, you're like, oh, maybe I've, I've tried DTF in the past, not that kind of DTF, but you know, you've tried some printing like this, it didn't really work out. I would say 
Definitely, before you purchase this machine, purchase some test printing from other services that are using a machine like this. So again, streetcrafter.com will have that size. Anything 14 inches will be printed from here so you guys can actually test it for yourself. But I would encourage you to test it. It's not that intimidating to do. Once you get, the, once you get your product, I think that's what's really cool about the evolution of our street crafters is that they're like, hey, I had this idea. I'm gonna send it to you guys. They printed it. We look at it, we're like, man, this isn't, this isn't the best quality because you didn't give us the best art. We train them up on how they should be formatting their art and now the, now the things are coming out like, wow, you really improved on your art, right? Yep. And now these guys are actually out there selling their services. They're selling it as a, as a service. They're customizing their brand. They're making their brand more personal. So instead of it just being a graphic design with something, they put the, the customer's name on it and it's really easy to do that with this stuff. So you can expand the possibilities of printing, but you can also expand your money-making ability by customizing things really easily because everything is just design-based. Whatever you design on Photoshop or Canva or Kittle is gonna print on this thing. So just consider that space, the area between the designs, and you're gonna have something solid. The better the art, the better the end product. Yeah, big time, 100%. So if you guys aren't an artist, right, either find one, get with somebody to help you because that's going to be the biggest game changer for you guys so if you guys have any questions about art or the formatting of it or how this process works head on over to my channel i actually got a couple of different videos where we're showing you in real time how this is working some profit potentials and margins you can have on products that's available at john x santos on youtube got a lot of videos for that so yeah 100 percent uh we've all been uh, doing a lot of content but something special that's for us is always doing stuff that's helping you guys grow. We're gonna link John's channel. We're gonna link if you want to get some samples. This is you know, pretty unplanned, but I think important because you guys can get all the information about when you get this, how much it costs, and what are the details that you guys have to know when you're purchasing it. Because if you're successful, then we're successful as a company. There's way less friction and all that and that's that's what is going to lead into everything being more prosperous for everybody and we'll be doing more stuff right so make sure you guys hit the comments on any of the stuff that you want or subscribe to john's channel make sure that you guys are subscribed to our channel subscribe we want to get to 100k soon and all that so that's what we got for you guys today and look forward to you guys seeing this next video and click it anywhere right there wherever that goes <laughs> I think it's right there. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> man, thank you so much, John. I appreciate you being here, man. This is amazing. Thank you. I'm so excited. Let's start printing this thing. Let's roll. <laughs>